Programming languages are pretty great. Because of them, we can communicate with a computer without having to write any machine code. Kids have it so easy these days with their fancy schmancy GUIs, two chains, and whatnot. Hey, Greg, how's it going? What's this? Is that a PDP-8 right behind you? A 12-bit MIDI computer? <laughs> it is very tedious to program in binary, so let's appreciate the fact that these languages exist. But, deep in the shadow realm, there exists a group of programming languages that break and bend programming paradigms. These languages are so vile they would make programming in binary feel convenient. They are known as Esoteric Programming Languages. Esoteric Programming Languages or ESOLANGs are not like your typical programming languages like these over here. If you haven't heard of them, you might be wondering, how are they different from regular languages? Well. Picture it like this. Imagine regular languages are built from Lego sets, okay? With them, you get nice, functional, and sensible constructions. Hey! Now, ESOLANGs, on the other hand, are instead built from a bucket of random Lego pieces, and with that, you get creations like this. It's creative, but horrifying. ESOLANGs are not meant to serve any practical use in software development, but rather to experiment and test the boundaries of programming language design. Some ESOLANGs are designed to make programming difficult. Many of them are created purely as a joke and most if not all of them are utterly useless. I've selected 10 of these languages and I will be running a Hello World program with each of them to see how they vary. But before we get started, join my Discord. Here's a depiction of what it's looking like at the moment. Link in the description. Alright, starting at number 1 we have Whenever. In programming, control flow is the order in which function calls, instructions, and statements are executed when a program is running. There are three basic types of control flow. Sequential flow, conditional flow, and repetitive flow. In a sequential flow, each statement is executed one by one in order from top to bottom. For example, say you're making a bowl of cereal. You would first get a bowl, add cereal, and then add milk. If you do it any other way, you're genetically defective. But anyway, imagine a programming language that did not have control flow. Imagine a language that executed your code whenever it wanted. Well, imagine no more because this is exactly what this language does. Whenever is a programming language created by David Morgan Marr and it doesn't execute your program in any sequence specified by you. It does things whenever it feels like it. It's a true rebel. Oh, and you know variables? The thing that allows you to store data? Yeah, this language does not have that either. Running Hello World in Whenever is actually pretty simple though. It's exactly how you would do it in Python. But without the semicolon, relax, I know you guys don't do that around here. If I were to run hello world written like this, where each word is written on a different line, sometimes we might get hello world, but sometimes we might also get world hello. Here's another program I wrote that includes these lines. You wake up, you found out you won the lottery, you confess your love to your crush, and you now have a girlfriend. Now if I let whenever execute this, it returns, you confess your love to your crush, you now have a girlfriend, you found out you won the lottery, and then you wake up. And again, this happens because whenever code is not necessarily executed sequentially. It does, however, have statements such as defer to deal with the unpredictable nature of the execution environment. If you would like a full tutorial on this language, please let me know in the comment section so I can ignore it. At number two, we have R Node C. This programming language is made entirely out of famous quotes and one-liners from movies featuring Arnold. All of the classics are there. You got Commando, Total Recall, Predator, and of course Terminator. My favorite out of all of these has to be Commando though. I will forever love that gearing up scene. Anyway, this language was created by Lori Hardica, and when he designed this language, he decided to swap out standard commands with their corresponding Arnold one-liners. For example, the return keyword corresponds with I'll be back, cause return I'll be, you get it. And parse error corresponds with, what the f*** did I do wrong? It's not difficult to write a hello world application in this language. We only need three commands to achieve this. Firstly, we need to create an entry point for program execution. To do this, we write 
it's showtime and you have been terminated. This is similar to the primary main function in every C program. Everything between these two lines is where your code will run. To print something, we need to use the Arnold one-liner that corresponds with the print command, and that is, talk to the hand. And then we follow it with the string, hello world. Next up is Chef. Chef is a programming language created again by David Morgan Moore in which programs looks like cooking recipes. Now, considering how awful my code looks when I program, the only dish I would be able to make in this language is spaghetti. Get it? Spaghetti code? A program in Chef looks like this. This is a Hello World program David wrote himself. The first thing you need in a Chef program is a title for your recipe. He calls it Hello World Souffle. After that, you write a description of your recipe. This is optional as it is where your comments are placed. After that is listing the ingredients you'll be using in your recipe. And they are how you declare your variables. Next, you start cooking by setting up a timer in the temperature of your oven. This part is also optional. It's only used to make the recipe look more natural. David didn't do this. The method step is the actual body of the program, consisting of a sequence of instructions such as put into the mixing bowl and liquefy contents of the mixing bowl. Finally, the serve statements will print out its contents, and the number after it is how many dish you're serving. And just like that, you've got yourself a Hello World souffle. I would actually love for someone to make this and tell me what it tastes like. The wiki page for this language says, it falls short of the design goals of being easy to prepare and delicious. Fun fact, a person named Mike Worth wrote a Hello World program in this language where the program can be followed as a functional recipe for a chocolate cake. This man not only let his computer execute his code, but he himself also executed it and actually baked the cake. I think that's just amazing. Up next, at number 4, we have Whitespace. This SOLang was created by Edwin Brady and Chris Morris. Before I talk about it, I want to show you right away what a program in this language looks like. What do you see here? Good guess, but no, it's not the amount of bitches you have. What you're looking at is actually a Hello World program that's made entirely out of white space characters. While the majority of programming languages ignore or assign little meaning to most white space characters, in this language only white spaces have meaning. Therefore, the source code of programs written in Whitespace is invisible. If I highlight what's in this document, you'll notice that the highlighting looks like lines of code. But they're actually white spaces that were generated with tabs, spaces, and line feeds, or new line characters. Each space, tab, or line feed character is preceded by the identifying comment, S, T, or L, respectively. All other characters are ignored by the program and can be used as comments. Coming at number 5, we have chicken. This SOLang was created by Torbjorn Sodestad. And in this language, the word chicken is the only valid symbol. A Hello World program in chicken looks like this. Look at all those chickens. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this language, I was really thrown off by it. And that's because when I first began learning programming languages, I'd always run into keywords I had trouble understanding because they'd always sound so complicated to me. For example, words like public static void main. That sh** used to f me up. So when I saw this SOLang and noticed the only keyword it uses is chicken, I was stooped. Because of how silly this language looked, I had the impression it wasn't all that complicated. I was wrong. In a chicken program, the word chicken isn't the only token that plays a part in this language. Trailing new lines and spaces are also significant. Basically, you have a number of chickens separated by spaces and the number of chickens you have on each line corresponds to an operation code. A new line character, or an empty line to be exact, will return an operation code of zero. Essentially, you're really just writing a series of numbers to fetch specific words, and that can quickly become tedious and irritating. So yeah, chicken is a lot more complex than I first thought. If you would like to learn more about this language, I would strongly recommend reading this paper by Doug Zonker where he explains in detail how the structure of this language works. I'll leave a link to it in the description. At number 6, we have Befunge. This language was originally developed by... Steve, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Was that your holding? I can explain. Oh. I see. No need to explain. I think I know what's going on. 
wait, why, why is there music playing? You know what this means, right? Wait, Ardens, please, look, I'm sorry. Nah, it's too late for sorries. Wait, 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 I don't like this. Whatever you're about to do, please don't do I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the site you visit. I use it on all of my devices. It works on everything, computers, phones, tablets, and more. ExpressVPN keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, you're in luck because they're giving away three months free on a one-year package to all Ardens viewers. Secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash Ardens today. Link in the description. Now, where were we? Right. Befunge was originally developed by Chris Pressey with the goal of being as hard to compile as possible. There is more than one version of this language. I will be talking about Befunge 93. Fun fact, the word befunge was actually a typing error for the word before. It is said that it was typed by Curtis Coleman at 4am on a BBS chat system. Now I'm not gonna make fun of him for messing up the word before like that. It was 4am in the morning and the dude was probably tired. Befunge is famously known as a two-dimensional programming language. Programs in Befunge are arranged on a two-dimensional grid called the playfield, given an explicit limit of 80 by 25 cells on the size. The flow of a Befunge program can change in any of the four cardinal directions. The instruction pointer starts in the upper left corner and proceeds to the right, running every character it crosses. When it reaches an arrow, that pointer will turn and travel in the new indicated direction. Here's a visual representation of this happening with a Hello Road program. Number 7. Pete. Pete is a work of art. Literally. It's an essolang in which programs look like abstract paintings. It was created by David Morgan Mar Damn, him again? This dude must be the Bob Ross of essolangs. The language was named after the Dutch painter Piet Mondrian, who pioneered the field of geometric abstract art. David was inspired by Befunge and wondered if he could use an actual image as program code rather than just a 2D array of characters. David later found out how to encode data in instructions and colored pixels. Pete uses 20 distinct colors, with commands defined by the change in hue and lightness between adjacent pixels of color called codals. Similar to Befunge, execution in Pete is guided by a direction pointer, and it moves around the image in all of the four cardinal directions, from one continuous colored region to the next. There are so many ways to produce the same command in Pete. All of these are Hello World programs, and yet they all look totally different. I'll be running this one you saw in the thumbnail. It was designed by Thomas Schach. Coming in at number 8 is Intercal, or its full name, Compiler Language with No Pronounceable Acronym. It was created by Don Woods and Jim Lyon. Intercal was designed to mock and parody existing programming languages at the time by being completely different from them. The syntax of this language is cryptic and confusing. It contains a lot of features to make it as unpleasant as possible for programmers. It uses statements such as readout, ignore, forget, and modifiers such as please. What stands out to me the most about this language is that last keyword, please. Let's check out this Hello World program. If the word please is not frequently used in the code, the compiler can reject it. It considers the programmer insufficiently polite. If the modifier please is used too many times, then the compiler can reject the code again stating that the programmer is overly polite. Now I've seen a lot of error messages in my time, but I have never come across an error message that asks me to beg and plead a certain amount of times for a program to run properly. Coming up next at number 9 we have Brainfuck. A video about Esselings that doesn't mention Brainfuck would be considered a federal crime. This language is perhaps the most popular esoteric programming language out there. This Esolang was created by Urban Mueller, and it was designed to have the smallest possible compiler. The language was inspired by False, another Esolang which had a 1024 byte compiler. Mueller saw this, and he said, I can't let this slide. I've got to ratio this nigga. And so he did. He made brain f and managed to write a 240 byte compiler. Now, without ignoring the name of this language any longer, it's clear that brain f 
itself was also meant to be really hard to understand. This language only uses 8 single character commands. All of the characters are ignored and should be considered as comments. Brain works with a series of memory cells, each of which initially set to zero. There is a pointer that points to one of these cells at a time, and you can use the commands to manipulate the pointer, increment and decrement bytes, handle input and output, and declare loops. This alien-like syntax is a hello world program with no variables, no functions, and no classes. Lastly, coming in 10th place is Malboge. This SOLang is considered to be the most complicated programming language. It was designed with the goal of being next to impossible to use. It may not sound as intimidating as brain f until you find out that this language was named after the 8th circle of hell in Dante's Inferno. Brief summary, Dante Arieri is an Italian poet who wrote the long narrative poem, The Divine Comedy, which deals with an imaginative vision of the afterlife. The Inferno is the first part of the Divine Comedy, and in this section, different categories of sin are punished in different circles. There are nine circles in total, Malaboge being the eighth one. Sinners placed in the upper circles of hell are given relatively minor punishments, while sinners in the depth of hell endure far greater torments. It is said that the inventor of Malboge, Ben Olmsted, never wrote any programs using the language. Surprisingly, it took almost two years for the first Malboge program to appear. And what's even crazier is it wasn't even written by a human being. It was generated by a beam search algorithm. In Malboge, the virtual machine is based on trinary instead of binary, which I didn't even know was possible. Instructions are encrypted as they are executed, and it also has this thing called the crazy operation, which I don't even want to get into. After knowing all of this, brain f didn't sound as scary. This is what a Hello World program looks like in Malboge. This looks like what I would get if I were to randomly slide my fingers all around the keyboard. And that concludes this video. If you had to create an esoteric programming language, please let me know what it would be like. I'm intrigued. I would definitely like to make one myself one day. Squashed Oranges, if you're watching this video, I hope you're doing well, and shoutouts to you my boy for giving me that idea. Oh, and if any of you are pressed because you didn't see a language you wanted me to talk about in this video, uh, get a life, okay? If it wasn't there, then that just means I didn't want it in my list. Don't tell, don't tell me I forgot about it. What am I doing? That's just gonna encourage y'all even more. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so 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 much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, it's free. Leave a like, share this video, and um, programming expectations versus reality jokes aren't funny. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. I'm the singing salmon, spending all day jamming. <laughs>